So today's class, we are moving forward from this Tuesday's lecture, which was Introduction to Panchakarma, which many people missed. So I'll go through a few things that we did. So we, we talked about Upakarma, Purva Karma, which means before uh, the actual Panchakarma, and then the Panchakarma, and we talked about Paschata Karma. And Amapachan is part of um, Upakarma. So that's what we're doing today. This is what we did on Tuesday. Very, very quickly, I'll go through this. So what is Panchakarma? Pancha means five, and karma is, of course, according to the dictionary, karma actually means action. An action that brings an equal and opposite uh, reaction. That's your karma from a philosophical perspective. But here the Panchakarma means an actual physical action that we do to bring the uh, balance to both body and mind and help the dosha return to its own sthanam. So eradication of dosha at different sites is panchakarma. Purva karma. So the first stage of um, panchakarma is purva karma, where we are preparing the body and the mind to undergo the therapies. So we have a diet plan and we make a protocol. So sometimes it's called upa, means before. Sometimes it's called purva, again, before. Um, Atul is going to start Sanskrit classes from March 6th. And uh, so he's going to be using all of this glossary that we have done till now uh, to make it more authentic. So before this point, if a person has visham agni or tikshna agni or they have uh, imbalanced agni and they have ama, the first protocol is we must balance the agni. And at this point, most of the times, in fact, 95% of the time when we're doing panchakarma is because a person has ama. It mean, and why do they have ama? They have ama because their agni is imbalanced. So we want to give deepana, deepana, and pachana herbs. At this point, we also start giving snehana. Snehana means oiling or abhyanga, for, especially for vata pitta people, not so much for kapha, and svedana. There, so we, what we are trying to do is pull the ama out, both physically and you know through the therapies. Pull ama out and balance agni by giving herbs, diet that help agni, and they pull the ama out from deep into the dhatus. And snehana, somebody has already got ama. Why are we doing snehana here? Why are we oiling the body with so much sesame oil? Because, you know, the ama, especially the fat-soluble ama, is not going to come out just with the herbs and the diet. It's stuck to the dhatus. It's deep into the dhatus. In order to pull it out, we do a lot of the oil, which is very hot. Well, not very hot, but it's warm. It actually enters all the seven epidermal layers, and it goes directly into the rakta dhatu. It mixes with the rakta dhatu, it mi mixes with the mamsa dhatu, and it attaches itself along with the help of the herbs that are already in the ras rakta, in the rakta dhatu. It attaches itself to the ama. So we are increasing the ama in, in one way by giving snehan, but we are also pulling the ama out with, you know, for a vata person, we might even give them ghee to drink. So they're drinking five or six ounces of ghee every day for seven days. And then they start going through certain therapies. Now we pull the ama out by doing bastis. So really the purva karma is the most important. Pancha karma is the actual therapies. You're doing bastis, you're doing enemas, you're doing um, you know, shirodhara, vamana, virechan. But the first is we need to ripen the ama. If it is not ripened, it's not coming out. It's not so good. So like I said in the last class also, um, some people will do this juice fast for three days or two days or five days, and it does pull the ama out. But then they go back to a normal diet, and then what they're doing is they're pushing the ama back into the tattoos. Sometimes a person has ama and they go for a deep tissue massage. The tissue, deep tissue massage will start moving the ama in the system and then they feel very depleted and they feel fatigued after the massage. So any kind of massage is contraindicated when somebody has ama. 
then why are we giving snehana because really snehana or abhyanga is not technically a massage it's oleation of the body and it is not deep tissue so we help the ama to get processed in the upakarma by help of herbs snehana oil massage and internal oleation so while a person is taking herbs internally to help ripen the ama to help balance the agni externally they are getting oil massage and internally they are also drinking ghee they're drinking lots of ghee especially for the fat soluble ama not if a person has high cholesterol then we do not give ghee so internal oleation is not necessarily this you have swedanam or steam therapy so now all the ama that rises up in the epidermal layer in the skin can come out especially the water soluble one comes out from the sweat glands so when we do steam therapy it comes out as sweat glands so swedana dry swedana can be done to dry swedana mean infrared heat or sauna can be given to a kapha person but for a vata and pitta steam therapy only because it's too drying for them and steam therapy has water molecules as well so within the steam it's it's very hydrating but it's not and it's not drying and at this time when we are trying to ripen the whole ama we give a khichdi diet or a mono diet with mung bean why because mung bean is tridoshic if someone has atisara let me just write that atisara down here somebody has diarrhea atisara mung bean is given that means if someone has tikshna agni their agni is very high and they have pitta type of ama then we give mung bean with basmati rice maybe lassi or buttermilk or if somebody has uh, vishama agni so mung bean will also balance the vishama agni as well so then we give a kanji rice gruel and we give uh, mung bean khichdi again but with lots of water and certain vegetables it's not very dry it's very watery like almost like a khichdi soup it's a gruel actually with with ghee is given so it's the same khichdi made up of rice and mung bean and certain herbs and vegetable but the way it is prepared is different for pitta and it's different for vata for kapha i would not even give the rice part i would just give the mung bean when i did when i went through the 45 day panchakarma treatment in india for 49 days i was the first 25 days i was only given one proper meal a day only with mung bean you know so there was no rice at all there was just mung bean after my 49 days i didn't ne- did not want to see mung bean again but of course i did so it was a mono diet of just and it was very uh, watery and then you have the kanji rice gruel and this kanji is a very special rice called um, shilashtaka rice it's red in color it almost looks like um, you know pieces of wood it's red and it is it's very big it's very long and um, i mean if you look at it it almost looks like um, you know little pieces of you it even looks like barley so i'll i'll share a picture with you and that rice is uh, specially very conducive for a vata person as well and that rice sometimes is used and sometimes there's another kind of there's many many varieties of rice that are used for a kapha person wild black rice are used because they're and they're very hard to find so very small amounts and you make it takes hours to cook it and um you cook it and you make a gruel with it that means 16 parts water to uh one part rice and then that can be given with ghee also so person remains on a mono diet at the time when they're going upakarma every day but since uh if somebody comes to you don't put person on a mono diet the next day you can start them off with okay every dinner you will have this mono diet for one week and the next week you will have two meals a day with that with the mono diet and the third week when you come for panchakarma then they stop all the herbs and the diet so some of the indications of panchakarma is the doshas have moved into the dhatus agni is imbalanced and a person is high ama they have a chronic fatigue they feel fatigued even after a full night sleep 
they have no appetite, they just feel very imbalanced. So we did this before, it, so I'm going to just go very quickly. You can uh, see the class, it's already in the Dravya module. Uh, AMA is undigested putrefied food molecules, both fat soluble and water soluble. It's easy to get rid of the water soluble AMA just by drinking hot water throughout the day and with certain teas and herbs, but fat soluble will really stick to you. Uh, AMA is sticky and can move deep into the, th uh, the dhatus. And also the first stage of any disease is sometimes also called AMA. And the first stage of AMA, there's three stages of AMA, is all usually Kapha AMA. So you have two types of uh, dosha imbalances. Somebody comes to you with a Vata, Vita, Kapha imbalance. You have the dosha imbalance without AMA, which is Nir AMA. At this stage, really no Panchakarma is needed, but sometimes Shaman therapies can be given. And sometimes they will come to you with AMA. If there is AMA, then Panchakarma may be advised. So what are the symptoms of AMA? They have no appetite, they have indigestion, their tongue is coated, bad breath, fatigue. Also uh, the sweat is coated and their urine is very yellow in color. Uh, mostly they have a very, uh, they have indigestion also, not just your regular indigestion, but if they have, they're pitta people, they have diarrhea, and if they have vata, they have chronic constipation. And if they're kapha, they also can have constipation. They're unable to concentrate, they're susceptible to infection, and they have generalized, localized pain. So these are just some general symptoms of ama or toxins. Ama has opposite qualities of Agni Ama. It's cold, dull, obstructing, heavy, gross, cloudy, has a foul smell, sticky, adhering, raw, and unprocessed. Whereas Agni is hot, sharp, light, penetrating, subtle, clear, fragrant. Why are we explaining Ama and Agni together? Because to reduce Ama, you need to increase Agni. Because Ama looks like Kapha. And when we talk about Pitta Ama, Vata Ama, the, when the first stage of ama is the kapha usually. So kapha ama has transformed and now it has got other things, pitta and vata, you know, energy attached to it. But even when we say it's a pitta ama, it started off as this raw, unprocessed kapha substance. So today we are talking especially about upakarma. For general kapha ama, normally, 80% of the time anyone has ama issues, they're usually this white coating on the tongue is a kapha ama. And it might be accompanied by sinus, it might be accompanied by phlegm. So we use kapha ama pachan herbs. So these are very general herbs, uh, you know, dry ginger, dhibitaki, trikatu, chitrak, and cardamom. But this is only the starting. This will only get them started. So I would tell you start them off with these first few herbs. Let them get used to it. Because for kapha ama deeply rooted, it may take two or three months for them to be on that program. Let them get used to this. Start changing the diet. So today's class is Panchakarma Dravya Stage 1, week 1 to 3 approximately I've given. So very first week, you start very small amount of herbs at the meals. Like I said, you can start them off with one mono diet meal a day. For example, if they're working, at this point, people still, they have, they're not going to take six or eight weeks off. So they're still going to work. That means it's hard for them to really cook lunch. So they can, you know, make, bre you know, they can cook their lunch in the morning and take a thermos or lunch with them. Or they can start off with just doing a dinner with kichdi. Whatever works for them, you need to have a very motivated client here. So both the herbs and the meals can be increased to the second week. So first week they can start off either lunch or dinner with kichdi and small amount of herbs. And you increase the herbs in second week and decrease it in third week depending on what plan you have created. At this point when you are asking them to be on a Panchakarma program, you give, ask them to follow a daily routine of either a Pitta pacifying Kapha or Vata pacifying and move towards dosha pacifying amapachana and agni balancing light diet. 
meaning that even if they're vata people whole wheat is okay for them even then we are asking them to eat more rice and mung bean and a lighter diet you know which is mostly uh, semi liquid in nature and agni balancing herbs at this point for a vata person you can start them off with chitrak lemon hingavashtak before and during meals prikatu cardamom and tulsi vata tea and vata churnam that itself for some people who have never done ayurveda routine before at this point you know when you asking them to just have a daily routine to balance themselves even this can take 2 3 4 weeks for some people depending on the person for others you know they are ready to do it in 3 days or 4 days or 5 days it depends on how motivated a person is if this person is coming to india then we in india you know we get admitted in an ayurvedic facility where they cook for us and they do everything for us but in us it's not quite possible i think the only place that there are only two or three places that i know that actually admit you but even then you are actually living in a hotel you're not living in their facility uh the raj at maharishi day it's the same facility where you're getting the treatment in the same facility you're actually living there but you have all of the facilities where you but four or five only but in india you have them at every nook and cranny so it's hard when you actually have a job and you're trying to follow a pk diet but you know we we work with the people it's a pitta person you give guduchi shatavari roasted anar dana anar dana is pomegranate because it's very stringent so we have peric coriander fennel rose tea coconut water mint tea pitta churnam neem so you can do a combination and permutation of a pitta diet and pitta herbs kapha this is very important because most of the time the ama is going to be kapha related it's only you know one in 10 person or one in two in 10 people will will have vata pitta issues in ama mostly it will be kapha issues kapha kapha ama is very easy so it could be a pitta person with a kapha ama it could be vata person with a kapha ama also then you give trikatu chitrak cinnamon to see neem one thing you for a kapha you want to move them when they are doing a pre panchakarma therapy is eat only one big meal at lunch time kaphas you are moving them away from breakfast and dinner you can give breakfast hot beverage and cooked fruit dinner you can give soup no grains you can give them diuretic vegetables like carrot or celery though i wouldn't give too much celery to a kapha because it also has salt in it feel free to ask any question so now it has happened a person at this point also if a person has constipation let me just write that down if somebody has agni issues somebody has constipation then you can give them trifala if it's especially a vata person you can give them trifala ghee or if you want to give them some people don't like to take them i like to give them digestone by maharishi ayurveda which is trifala plus it's just trifala with cabbage rose and the reason i like to give that is because it already has a ghee and anupana mixed in it the way it was processed and made so they don't you don't have to give digestone with anupana or vehicle so i like that otherwise trifala ghee is the best thing you give them especially when you're aiming to reduce ama so di- also digestone is 1000 mg so it's it's a very heavy duty dose so if someone has atisara or they have diarrhea at this point you want to balance it out also someone has toxin specially related to the liver then we give kal megh or guduchi they have affinity for liver so when you are making a plan for whosoever person a b or c to do a panchakarma program or even for yourself let's say you want to put yourself in a panchakarma program so find out what is what is it that you want to start off with if your agni is imbalanced number one you want to be on a regular bowel movement not diarrhea not constipation but regular bowel movement and then you can start yourself with 
Kalameg or Guduchi if you want to detox your liver. Kalameg is very, very strong. I would say just start with Guduchi. And then move towards Amapachan herbs and Agni balancing herbs. And start that mono diet once a day, just once a day, whether lunch or dinner. And maybe in the week two or week three, you can increase it to twice. Unless you are kapha, then you're only having one meal a day. Now in the stage two, which could be starting in week four or it could be start, starting in week three, what, what do we, this is a very sample generic plan. This is not written in stone. This is just very sample. Uh, we continue with the Agni balancing herbs if the Agni is still not balanced. Once regular bowel movements and Sama Agni is slowly being established, move towards Sa Ama. So herbs that were not started in the first few weeks are getting started now. Meals may now become mono diet for Vata Pitta. That means all the two meals, their breakfast, lunch, dinner are pretty much the same every single day for a few weeks along with steamed vegetables and dals for kapha. And also complex herbal formulations can now be added for certain things. So in stage one, it is, you know, formulation is, you know, it's scraping and helping you to prepare for stage two, but we did not give any formulation in stage one. We are here not talking of nirama vata, nirama pitta, nirama kapha. We're talking sa ama. Vata with Ama, Vata with Pitta, Vata with Kapha. Normally when Vata with Ama is there, then you have, it's possible a person has rheumatoid arthritis. So we are not really going into that right now. We will in April when Dr. Sahana does the, the protocol module with you, the Chikitsa module with you. Suffice to say, this is a person, mostly it's a Kapha person, or even if it's Pitta Vata, the problem is they have Ama that is Kapha in nature. Pretty much. So for then, herein when you're starting formulation for someone who also has arthritis, especially Amavata, Yogaraj Gugulu is a formulation or Maha Yogaraj Gugulu is given. Formulations cannot be given when someone has an imbalanced Agni or Ama, too much Ama. Uh, sometimes Gugulu can be given because Gugulu is acting in the, the bone tissue, in the Asti Dhatu. Trikutu, iranda or castor oil or even iranda leaves are given sometimes. Trifala, gritam again, hari taki, cumin, tulsi tea, vata tea, hot water. Certain, you can start these things off in the fourth week. But again, everyone is different. You might not even start it for six weeks. You might even start it in three weeks. Depends on the person. Depends on you. If it's a pitta person, uh, manjishta, neem, aloe, mushta, kutki, coriander, cumin, fennel, cinnamon, daru, haridra, sweet turmeric, ghee, pittati, lassi, whey, warm water. Another thing is you will find a lot of people, at least in California, um, they have a very hard time giving up, you know, for the five or six weeks. If they're eating meat, they don't want to give it up and they don't want to give up their salads and raw food. So for me, it's a big struggle just to convince them not to eat salads for six weeks, you know, the raw food. Um, a lot of people may have an allergy to wheat or they may have allergy to lactose. Then you want to remove the lassi from here. So your question is what can go wrong during this time? Well, the point is when someone is doing a Panchakarma protocol with you or even with Nia, you know, we're monitoring them very closely. So when you put them on a diet, I usually end up making an Excel sheet with for everybody and I share it on Google Documents with them. And then everything that they've eaten there's and everything that's going on with their body, they write it. It's almost like an online journal that they maintain that they have shared with me. So I go and look at it every day and then we have a follow-up every two or three days. We have a follow-up conversation over the phone and every one week they come back uh, for um, to me for um, a checkup and I check their tongue, I check their pulse and we are monitoring them consistently. If we see that something is not suiting them, we immediately stop it. Like we, there was one person, uh, you know, who, whose blood pressure actually shot up when she was in the first stage and he completely stopped it. And uh, 
after you know, after a few months she started again and she was fine in another instance this person we put her on a, a you know pk pre pk diet and she started having her agni was balanced and she started having she was feeling better and her tongue was getting clear but just before we reached the pk stage her you know some tragedy happened in her family and she just didn't want to go through the panchakarma with the tragedy in her and then i said forget it just just go and attend to your family so also the person did not want to do it it's not going to work for them and also if you know you if even if a person tells me i don't feel okay with this so it's a daily monitoring especially if they're still working so you have to they have to be in constant supervision to give you one example again in this stage 2 i'm giving you another example i had a pitta kapha person with chronic constipation who literally had to take laxatives every single day or she wouldn't go to the bathroom so this is a pitta kapha person and when she came to me and we started her on she was so chronically constipated we had to give uh trifula 10 to 15 trifulas a day for her to have one bowel movement a day can you believe it and then when she reached now finally she was on one bowel movement every day and when we reached a uh, week 4 for her it was a week 5 it was time to give her some purgatives so i gave her senna you know and senna is such a strong purgative it it'll really make you go to the bathroom so we gave her in one day nothing happened second day nothing happened third day nothing happened fourth day we gave her senna and we gave her other purgatives and then she was in the bathroom for 24 hours and she called me she's like i am literally staying here then i had to you know we had to give her uh, things that stop the diarrhea so you monitoring the person and this person is feeling depleted now then we had to give her something to stop the diarrhea then i gave her pomegranate and lassi uh you know so that stopped it and then she was supposed to undergo therapies uh, uh, you know the next day and we didn't do any therapies for 2 weeks till she was feeling better so just to give you an example it has to be monitored the minute a person says i do not feel well this doesn't suit me i feel funny stop stop It's as simple as that. Hope that answers your question. So, pancha karma is not something a person will do by themselves. They must be under a supervision of a practitioner. So, I've, I've seen people they call me and they say, you know, I'm doing pancha karma on myself. I just want to come in for three days for therapies, and I'm like, no thanks. Unless you do it with me, I will not do the therapies. This is not about the money because if I haven't monitored them right from the beginning. and sometimes when i feel they're not ready i ask them to go to their doctor make sure they're fine before they come especially uh people who have high cholesterol or they might have they might be pre diabetic i need them to go to their physician and once i actually had a lady write she got a letter from her physician for me because i refused to touch her i just felt something was wrong so you know i will do those things because we also need to protect ourselves as well so if you feel you, it's very good to if you can find a person or a doctor who's okay to work with you a lot of times people who come to you they're going to a regular chiropractor instead of a physician you can work with your with, with their chiropractor you can work with their doctor so at least i find not everybody but i find the doctors at least in san diego they're very open and if people have good insurance they they go and the, if the doctor says Uh, no i don't think this is okay then i won't do it so we want them to get their physicians okay before starting a detox program okay now we are moving to kapha please notice here this is hari taki which is an ingredient in trifala and then again this is bibi taki which is another ingredient in trifala and here and we should have written amalaki but i haven't so let me write it so hari taki for vata not you they're taking trifala and hari taki which is already an ingredient in trifala this one pitta you're not giving trifala they you're giving amalaki the the one part of trifala which is amalaki because it's pitta reducing 
here you're giving trifala and bibitaki again it is a it is a very detoxifying and scraping and lakan effect on the tissues it literally scrapes off the ama now a person is um sorry <laughs> I forgot to take this off. Let me cut that out. Okay. All herbs and formulations except purgatives for pitta discontinued during pradhana karma. So for pradhana karma, you have we give purgatives, right? Because we want them to purge everything. So we at this point, when a person is ready, now they are ready. They are having a regular bowel movement. Their agni is balanced. Now they're the ama is paripakva paripakva means it has been cooked and now you will sometimes see on their tongue is far more white than normal it actually becomes worse now you know they're ready then we stop all the herbs and formulations so while they're doing their therapies so let's say you're working with a massage therapist or you're working with a panchakarma therapist you will prepare the plan for the therapist she will perform the therapies or you can be you know if you have a massage license you might be doing it yourself but i suggest always working with somebody uh before i used to do both myself the plan and the therapies and it gets too much nowadays you know dr sahana does one part and i usually do the second part which works easy it's easier on on everybody concerned <laughs> uh paschat karma and rasayanas will be discussed in the next ravi class okay anyway i want to talk about going back again stage 2 so here in castor oil is given usually to vata along with mixed with so you have Two ounce of castor oil or iranda leaves. Then you have one ounce of citrus. It could be lemon, lime, or orange juice, fresh. So castor oil and citrus are amazing for vata. You not give castor oil by itself because it will, you know, make them go to the bathroom. and you'll also give trifala ghee why because trifala has a gentle laxative effect but it does not affect the the muscles it does not weaken the muscles of the rectum it, it's not weakening it however when we give herbs and purgatives like um, you know we're giving things like sudarshan or we're giving things like senna then they will over a period of long time they start a uh, weakening the whole motion they weaken the apanavata they weaken the muscles there so if you are, if we are going to give sana we only give for 2 or 3 days so this thing where we are giving castor oil citrus is not every day we may be give it for 2 days or 3 days or 4 days that's it nothing more every day we just give gentle laxatives like trifala why trifala is a gentle laxative because it is amalaki which is a tonic so while the bibitaki and haritaki are having a scraping and balancing effect the uh, one portion of trifala is balancing the so vata pitta kapha are all really getting balanced so amalaki is a tonic it's ha- it's having a tonic effect and bibitaki has a scraping and drying effect but because amalaki is present it is counteracting the effect of bibitaki so trifala is a very gentle laxative sometimes i would not always do it sometimes i uh, suggest for people and they're comfortable with it they've been if you have somebody who's been taking digestive enzymes for instance for a long time do not stop their enzymes till they're ready to stop them if someone has been taking supplements if they're not ready to stop it we cannot tell them what they can or cannot take one thing you know if a person is on any kind of medication you do want them to go to the doctor and get permission because at this time they can't be taking certain medications because even if they take a medication they will be having diarrhea or and they will be taking laxatives it will go just straight through so very very important there are so many contraindications here panchakarma can only be done with a person who has a strong constitution so if you have somebody who has 
uh, just had surgery or they're weak or they've had chemotherapy post cancer no sir no panchakarma for them must have a strong constitution because these are very weakening therapies plus if anybody is on any kind of drugs they're under a treatment of a doctor we don't want to touch them we don't want to go there and uh, also it is very important to let people know it's not just a program people that you come in and we do massage on you and then we give you basti and you leave doesn't work like that when we are ready for pradhan karma 50% of i would say of all the treatments are bastis let me just write that down when you come here for march 9th i will be making a couple of bastis bastis are enemas so you have a mixture of water plus oil or decoction or kashaya plus oil so this could be dashamula so you have panchamula and you have dashamula mula means root panch means five five roots dash means 10 mula means root either you have the five root mixture or you have the 10 root mixture you mix water warm water with sesame oil or you make a decoction or kashaya with dashamula mix a little bit of sesame oil in it or you even use ghee plus warm water or simply just sesame oil so usually the way bastis are done is first a person will be given water enema or a basti or actually they do it themselves we just give it to them and then we prepare the panchamula or the dashamula decoction or we can even do it with the different there's so many herbs to be can be used or we can use ghee and warm water and the second second basti they do is sesame oil or with the decoction kashaya or with the ghee and again they are given a water basti so it's water oil water or decoction or oil and it's given every single day for four or five days so it is administered self administration is good because ideally they you know once a basti is done we say don't move stay in one place you know lie on the left side of the body and then the right or, and just don't move and don't do any heavy duty activities when a person is pitta especially so ama pitta we might be giving we want to remove the ama that has become pakva that is that is cooked then we will use anupana which we can sometimes even ask them to drink aloe juice and pomegranate juice and i just came to know you can also give pomegranate flowers it is very exciting because we have a few pomegranate flowers outside so pomegranate juice aloe juice and then we have the ve lassi all of this is good for stopping atisara it's drying out a lot of pitta and of course in the you know as we go forward we will be mostly focusing on the kapha type of ama any questions Wow, it's such an interesting topic. <laughs> so, eradication of dosha at different sites is panchakarma. Purva karma. So, the first stage of um, panchakarma is purva karma, where we are preparing the body and the mind to undergo the therapies. So, we have a diet plan, and we make a protocol. so sometimes it's called upa means before sometimes it's called purva again before um abdul is going to start sanskrit classes from march 6th and uh, so he's going to be using all of this glossary that we have done till now uh, to make it more authentic so before this point if a person has visham agni or tikshna agni or they have uh, imbalanced agni and they have ama the first protocol is we must balance the agni and at this point most of the times in fact 95% of the time when we are doing panchakarma is because a person has ama that me and why do they have ama do a lot of the oil which is very hot well not very hot but it's warm it actually enters all the seven epidermal layers and it, it goes directly into the rakta dhatu it mixes with the rakta dhatu it mix, mixes with the mamsa dhatu and it attaches itself along with the help of the herbs that are already in the rasarakta 
in the Rakta Dhatu, it attaches itself to the Ama. So we are increasing the Ama in, in one way by giving Snehan, but we are also pulling the Ama out with, you know, for a Vata person, we might even give them ghee to drink. So they're drinking five or six ounces of ghee every day for seven days. And then they start going through certain therapies. Now we pull the Ama out by doing Bastis. So really the Purva Karma is the most important. Pancha Karma is the actual therapies. You're doing Bastis, you're doing Enemas, you're doing um, you know, Shirodhara, Vamana, Virechan. But the first is we need to write. They have Ama because their Agni is imbalanced. So we want to give Deepana, Deepana and Pachana herbs. At this point, we also start giving snehana. Snehana means oiling or abhyanga, for, especially for vata pitta people, not so much for kapha, and svedana. Where, so we, what we are trying to do is pull the ama out, both physically and you know, through the therapies. Pull ama out and balance agni by giving herbs, diet, that help Agni and they pull the Ama out from deep into the Dhatus and Snehana, somebody has already got Ama, why are we doing Snehana here? Why are we oiling the body with so much sesame oil? Because you know the Ama, especially the fat soluble Ama is not going to come out just with the herbs and the diet, it's stuck to the Dhatus, it's deep into the Dhatus. In order to pull it out, we deepen the Ama. If it is not ripened, it's not coming out. It's not so good. So like I said in the last class also, yeah. um, some people will do this juice fast for three days or two days or five days, and it does pull the ama out. But then they go back to a normal diet, and then what they're doing is they're pushing the ama back into the tattoos. Sometimes a person has ama and they go for a deep tissue massage. The tissue, deep tissue massage will start moving the ama in the system and then they feel very depleted and they feel fatigued after the massage. So any kind of massage is contraindicated when somebody has ama. Then why are we giving snehana? Because really snehana or abhyanga is not technically a massage, it's oleation of the body and it is not deep tissue. So we help the ama to get processed in the upakarma by help of herbs, snehana, oil massage. So today's class we are moving forward from this Tuesday's lecture which was introduction to panchakarma, which many people missed. So I'll go through a few things that we did. So we, we talked about upakarma, purva karma, which means before uh, the actual panchakarma and then the panchakarma and we talked about paschata karma. And Amapachan is part of um, Upakarma. So that's what we're doing today. This is what we did on Tuesday. Very, very quickly, I'll go through this. So what is Pancha Karma? Pancha means five, and Karma is, of course, according to the dictionary, Karma actually means action. An action that brings an equal and opposite uh, reaction. That's your Karma from a philosophical perspective. But here the Pancha Karma, means an actual physical action that we do to bring uh, balance to both body and mind and help the dosha return to its own sthanam. 